everyone! Welcome to episode number 653 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. Folks, we are talking all about Sosa and bringing the App Store concept to embedded systems today. David Tetley from Elma Electronic and I explore the evolution of VPX and VME, how modular software can help us build toward Sosa compliance, and more. So without further ado, please welcome David to Fish Fry. Hi, David. Thank you so much for joining me. Good to be here. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about bringing the App Store to embedded computing systems today. But David, before we dig into the solutions in this arena, talk to me a bit about the evolution of VME and VPX. Right. Well, um, open standard hardware architectures for embedded computing have have been around for over 40 years now. The first um, VME boards hit the market in 1982. And over the next 10 years, adoption ramped up. And by the early 90s, VME had been selected for some major military programs. At that point, there were many VME board vendors offering a wide variety of processing options and uh, software solutions ranging from bare metal to proprietary operating systems. At that point, VME also had shortcomings, though. It had limited I.O. and communication bandwidth between the boards that didn't satisfy the needs of distributed computing that were needed for really processing intensive missions, such as synthetic aperture radar, electronic warfare, and electro-optical IR processing. And vendors developed their own hardware solutions with competing protocols and all with different software infrastructure and middleware. And it really became the Wild West for software, where applications were tightly coupled to hardware architectures. There was different operating systems that were bespoke drivers. The applications really had... um, very limited portability or scope for reuse. Then along came OpenVPX in 2010. This really solved the communication bandwidth problem, but it didn't improve interoperability due to its broad spectrum of profiles, protocols, and user-defined options. However, adoption has been widespread, especially by the military. The commercial market still using some legacy form factors. They still live on, such as VME, but OpenVPX is where it's at now in the military. So, David, let's also talk about SOSA. Interoperability and portability are cornerstone with SOSA, right? So let's talk about the benefits that we're seeing with SOSA in particular. Yeah, so SOSA Consortium was was founded in 2019 with a goal to reach the plug-and-play panacea for VPX systems. And the first technical standard was released two years later in 2021. The technical standard really focused at the system level, so covered both hardware and software aspects of a sensor system. On the hardware side, SOSA really tightened up that open VPX broad specification by reducing the number of variables. The plug-in card level, it limited the number of slot profiles and interconnect protocols. It standardized the mechanicals, the cooling, power distribution, maintenance ports, and also tightly defined connectors and things like that. It also did a similar thing at the chassis and backplane layer by tightly defining backplane requirements, clock topologies, and connector types. And it also introduced things like chassis management into the standard. And because of this, we're much closer to the true plug and play sort of um, situation at the hardware level than we, you know, there's been huge progress made in the last five years on this. And the SOSA PlugFest events held over the last several years to validate interoperability, you know, have shown more and more. SOSA-aligned hardware products from multiple vendors working together in system. So it's really beginning to take effect and uh, prove its value from the hardware side of things. But the industry focus have really been on the hardware aspects, but SOSA also defines some of the key aspects of the software infrastructure. It defines the software platform on which application modules must run in terms of the runtime environment profiles. It defines the framework for management of hardware infrastructure via the system management definitions, defines the coordination of mission operations via task management. It also really defines how applications should be architected in terms of module partitioning and the software interfaces and interactions between the modules. It also adopts other standards. So one example being the adoption of the 
modular open radio architecture, Moira standard for the um, RF aspects of a sensor system. So David, talk to me specifically about that SOSA runtime environment and how this plays into the App Store concept. So a runtime environment provides the software infrastructure needed for an application to execute. And SOSA defines three runtime environment profiles. The first one leverages the future airborne capability environment known as FACE. It's an Air Force driven standard and it leverages the FACE operating system segment profiles as the standard runtime environment within SOSA. FACE has multiple runtime environment profiles within that specification and also supports standards such as POSIX and ARINC 653. So the FACE OSS profile is the main one, but then there's the container runtime environment profile that supports modules that do not align with FACE and also enables wrapping of, of legacy capability. And then thirdly, there's the um, virtual machine profile that supports additional operating systems and programming languages that may not align with FACE. It also allows the use of what's known as a, a type one bare metal hypervisor. And these can become very important for safety critical partitioning in safety critical applications. These three runtime environment profiles define the constraints and dictate the interfaces that application developers must adhere to in order to create highly portable social modules. And they really lay the foundation for that app store concept that we started off with here. So, David, there is also an opportunity for modular software here as well. And that will help us build towards SOSA compliance, correct? Yeah, that's right. And um, if you take system management, for example, the SOSA specification defines over 250 system management interactions between um, SOSA infrastructure and module elements. And these are divided into functional groups, which can be implemented with modular software agents and managers in a, in a sort of client server software architecture. These modules can be provided by plug-in card vendors, software vendors, or, or system integrators, and can be portable and reusable across different SOSA sensor types. But other opportunities exist to provide software components supporting things like task management, intermodule interactions, and supporting services that the SOSA modules might need, such as security services, for example. So, David, can you share any examples of SOSA in action? Yes, yeah, sure. The drive to adopt the modular open system approach by the U.S. Army has led to a technical specification for a universal computing platform to support multiple applications on Army vehicles. And it's called the CMOS Mounted Form Factor, or CMFF. And it defines an open standard architecture that dictates alignment with SOSA. It's really dictating that SOSA must be used, and it's really bringing SOSA to the battlefield. And prototypes have been developed across the industry, and the concept validated in field trials with interoperable solutions provided by multiple vendors. We're really expecting widespread adoption by the Army of that form factor over the next few years. Excellent. All right, David. Well, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, David, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? My favorite meal is curry. I'm a big fan of Indian food. So I would go for a lamb vindaloo. What a good choice. That makes me hungry thinking about it. <laughs> well, David, this was a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on my show and talking all about Sosa. Well, folks, that's all I've got for this week's Fish Fry. If you'd like more information about Elma, Sosa, or Vita, I've included a slew of links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal if LinkedIn is more your thing. I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn, and we are also on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon, too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash EE Journal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, 
hosted by me, and our animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of October 10th, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton. And you've been fried.